The seas have never been kind to Russia, always frozen and usually full of superior and more competent navies. Instead, over the centuries, it has been the rivers which filled the void, facilitating trade and exchange of peoples and ideas. Over the next few minutes, myself and Andrew from All About Russia are going to introduce you to five of the longest rivers in Russia. We would like to note that rivers are notoriously hard to measure, and the lengths stated here are for each respective river, not river system. All right, let's roll. The Nizhnaya Tunguska is the fifth longest river in the Russian Federation, running a length of 1,857 miles, a distance greater than that of New York to Albuquerque, New Mexico. It is the 17th longest river in the world and flows from the Tunguska upland in the Irkutsk Oblast into the Krasnoyarsk Krai before converging into the Yenisei River. The river, called the Katenga in Avenk, has served to provide food and water to many Tungustic people across Siberia. The Russians reached this river in 1606 and quickly found it difficult to navigate and full of hazards. As such, few settlements exist along its banks, with the largest being Tura, the former capital of the Avenk Autonomous District of Turahansk. During Soviet times, the river was used to help power coal mining, but such industry has moved further south since the 1930s. As a result, the Nizhnaya Tunguska remains one of the wildest and least polluted rivers in the Russian Federation. The Yenisei is the fourth longest river in the Russian Federation, running a length of 2,167 miles. It is the 14th longest river in the world and flows from the confluence of the greater and lesser Yenisei rivers. This river is the second Great Siberian River and goes by many names. The Yenisei flows through the Tuvan Republic, Caucasian Republic and the Krasnoyarsk Krai, flowing out into the Kara Sea. Historically, it was the lifeblood for many Tungustic and Mongolic people. Interestingly, there is some evidence that Uyghurs resided upon its banks in early 600 AD. The Russians first arrived at this river in 1605, setting up winter quarters on its banks. Being a wide and a deep river, the Yenisei helped the Russians to expand deeper into Siberia, conquering Mongolian Khanates and asserting Russian control. As such, a swathe of settlements appeared across the banks of the river, such as Kizil, Abakan and Krasnoyarsk. The river has been used to ferry goods up and down the Yenisei for centuries, maintaining itself as a key transit of Siberian commerce. Furthermore, the power of the river is used to harness huge amounts of electricity to power the mining and smelting industries across Siberia. As a result of Soviet industry across the river's course, a degree of pollution has occurred. The River Volga is the third longest river in the Russian Federation and the 12th longest in the world, stretching an enormous 2,194 miles, a distance greater than that of New York to Phoenix, Arizona. Despite going by several other names such as the Adele, Yul and Rav, the Volga is often considered the most Russian river and the mother river of Russia itself. This is because it was a core river of the old Muscovite Principality, having been accessible by the Russians since the 9th century and has flowed through a great number of historic Russian provinces. Emerging in the Valdai Hills, the River Volga flows through the Tver Blast, the Yaroslav Blast, the Kostroma Blast, the Ivanova Blast, the Nizhny Novgorod Blast, the Mariel Republic, the Chuvash Republic, the Tatarstan Republic, the Ulyanovska Blast, the Samara Blast, the Saratov Blast, the Volgograd Blast, the Astrahan Blast, and the Kalmyk Republic, finally flowing out into the Caspian Sea. Even before Russia existed, Sarmatians, Huns, Volga Bulgars, and Khazars all thrived from its waters. The river's depth and width made it, for centuries, an obstacle to overcome and a useful defensive post. In early Russian history, the River Volga was often used to demark where the Rus land lay and where the steppe nomad land lay, who would terrorize the Rus. As the princedom of Muscovy expanded into a sardom, the Russians pushed over this river, changing it from an obstacle to an artery of trade and wealth. Today, hundreds of settlements rest along its banks. Some of the largest are also capital cities of the various republics and oblasts, such as Chepoksari, Kazan, Tver, and Volgograd, just to name a few. 
The Volga River is the longest river in the whole of Europe and infamously became an obstacle to invaders during the Second World War, when the bloodiest recorded battle in human existence, the Battle of Volgograd, saw tens of thousands of invading Wehrmacht soldiers struggle to cross its depths. The Irtysh is the second longest river in the Russian Federation and the eighth longest in the world with a length of 2,640 miles. Amazingly, despite being quite a bit longer, the Irtysh is actually a tributary of the Ob River, making it the second longest tributary river in the world after the Parana River of South America. It forms in the Mongolian Altai Mountains before entering China and flowing through the Xinjiang province, enters Kazakhstan and flows through the East Kazakh region and the Pavlodar region, before finally entering Russia. From there it flows northwards through the Omsk Oblast, the Tumen Oblast, across the Kanti-Mansi Autonomous Okrug, before reaching the Ob. This also makes it the most international Russian river, as it spans three other countries before reaching Russia. Due to its geography and vast length, it has served numerous Turkic and Mongolic peoples across the centuries. The river is actually recorded in Chinese annals as being the site of a decisive Chinese victory during the Tang era over the West Turkic Khanate way back in 657 AD. The Irchish has been an artery of trade as well as a bounty for food and fresh water for centuries, and a core conduit for Siberian Khanate. As such, the Russians first reached it in 1587, having steamrolled the neighboring Kazakh Khanate and seeking furs in the newly opened Siberia. Given the enormous length of this river, the Russians never truly controlled it at all, and for a long time the southern part served as a border with the Dzungar Mongols, then the Qin Chinese. The Irtysh has birthed hundreds of settlements along its banks, with some of its largest being Omsk, Tomsk and Khantimansisk. Trade is immense on this river, with cargo ships a common sight heading both north and south. In fact, the world's deepest lock at 42 meters is on the Irtysh, helping to transport goods from Kazakhstan to Russia. The Irtysh's powerful waters also fuel dozens of hydroelectric power plants and dams across its length, providing renewable energy for all four countries that share it. Our last and longest river is the River Lena. The last of the three Great Siberian Rivers, the River Lena runs a course of 2,668 miles. Those of you paying attention will note that is a mere 28 miles longer than the Irtysh, a distance less than New York to New Brunswick. As well as being the easternmost of the three Great Siberian Rivers, the Ob, the Yenisei and the Lena, it is also the eighth longest river in the world. Sourced in the Baikal Mountains, the Lena flows through the Irkutsk Oblast across the Saka Republic before emptying into the Arctic Ocean. The name comes from the event word Ulyina, meaning the large river, and is similar across the Buryat, Yakut and Mongolian languages respectively. Supporting the aforementioned people for centuries, the Russians arrived on its banks in 1623, as always led by adventuring Cossacks. Due to the location of the river, Few large settlements have successfully been created, as up to 70% of the river freezes over in the winter, with a notable exception being the capital of the Saka Republic, Yakutsk. The River Lena, despite being so far from Moscow, has played an important role in Russian history. In 1911, the Lena Goldfields massacre was seen as a defining moment in class warfare within Russia, whilst Lenin himself took his pseudonym from this river, which is kind of weird as Lenin never actually visited the River Lena, having served his time in exile on the Yenisei in a village of Shashenskoye. The River Lena is used sparingly for transport, as few settlements exist on its banks. Likewise, due to the lack of human habitation, the River Lena has no dams or hydroelectric power plants, making it not only the longest, but arguably one of the cleanest rivers in the Russian Federation. Now, to see part one of this video, head on over to Andrew's channel, All About Russia. This guy has the patience to tell you everything. As always, thank you to my patrons. Geoperspective, out.